Hey guys, thanks for watching. Well, we are about to launch onto a whole different sort of critter with this video, let me tell you. You guys know I love metal detecting, and I'm not about to abandon that. I'm going to keep right on metal detecting, making metal detecting videos, but I think you know by now that the thing that drives me is my passion for history. And this video has been something that I have been thinking about for over a year now, and I think it's time to do it. I have an object that has traveled with me, it's been with me through marriage and four children and a lot of stages of life. It's been with me 21 years. And it's been a mystery for 21 years. It's been a story without an ending for the last 21 years. And in January of 2019, this little object's going to turn 100 years old. And my goal is to get it back to the people that it belonged to. And I need your help to do that. I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a second. Like I said, we're still going to be doing metal detecting videos, but I'm starting this little series of videos that are going to be popping up probably probably weekly uh, and until we get a, this mystery solved, until we get a, an end to the story. And uh, I think some of you guys, maybe not everybody, but I think some of you guys will enjoy it and come along with me and I hope participate in, uh, in returning this object. All right, what am I talking about? Well, in the past, I have said, when we go out metal detecting, we're not just digging objects. We're digging pages of people's lives. Well, quite literally, this object is pages of somebody's life. This is a diary. This is a diary from 1919, and it belonged to a man by the name of Justin E. Pike. From Camden, New Jersey. Now, Justin served in World War One. To what extent, I haven't been able to figure out yet. This diary starts after World War One has ended, just after it has ended, and he's still in France and he's still serving in the military. And I think he, he's making maps. I'm not sure what you would call that job, map maker. I'm not sure. That's what he's doing. And so this is a daily recording of his life during this last period of his term of service and it, it ends when he goes home it's very very interesting uh, there's uh, there's people mentioned in here that've got pretty cool historical connections there's uh events in there that are just kind of like wow and there's times in there that seeing somebody's inner thoughts um, it's pretty comical at times. A diary is a pretty sacred thing. And uh, to be able to open this up, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And we're going to go through this diary page by page. There's clues in this diary that are going to help us return this to surviving family, if there are any. And I'm hoping that there is. I have chased down a lot of these clues over the last 21 years. At different times, I'll pick this up and I'll run with it until I hit a brick wall and then I've got to stop. So I've, I've learned a little bit, but we're going to go back and relearn these things because I haven't kept notes. And you can help me. And I have a suspicion that one of you watching this video or maybe a handful of you probably have skills that far exceed mine and are going to be able to help me greatly in returning this. And then I'm going to video the return. Now, I may not be able to put the object in family members' hands. I'm not sure where they're living. We may have to mail it. But there'll be phone conversations. And I'm going to ask if I can record those and share the entire process with you. And I'm going to thank you in advance. Because I know some of you guys are going to help. So, a great story. You're going to enjoy reading this diary with me. But there's a mystery that goes along with it. Now, the mystery may never be solved, but it in itself is an incredible story. The mystery is more about me than the diary. I need to tell you a little bit of my story before you'll understand what I'm talking about. So, I was hatched back in 1981 down in Florida. By 1982, my parents and uh, my aunts and uncles decided 
in mass, all the families were going to leave Florida and they were going to come up to Western North Carolina. They bought 28 acres of land and basically homesteaded it. There was nothing there. We lived in campers and one house got built and everybody lived in it. And then a second house got built. And then last, our house got built, my house. And so people thought we were starting a commune. They thought we were crazy, but it was a good life. But my house, uh, I'm not even sure when it got built. I'm going to say maybe 1984, somewhere in there. My house was hand-built by my father, cousins, and uncles. No builders ever came into this house. We had a two-story log cabin. Now, there's a set of stairs, of course, it goes up to the second story, and underneath that set of stairs is a little tiny storage space with a little, small little entry access door. Underneath the stairs is where our hot water heater sat. Now, by 1997, I'm 16 years old. The hot water heater, which is original to the house, goes out. So me and my dad crawl under the stairway to pull this hot water heater out. And as I were tipping the hot water heater over to get it out the door, I put my hand on top of the water heater and found that. You can even see that there's newsprint still stuck to the outside cover. It was really wet on top of that hot water heater. So this thing was just damp and moldy and I pulled it off. I didn't know what it was, but it looked old. And me and my dad sat there and thought, what in the world is that? So I take the pages and, and I get it dried out and I get the pages separated very carefully and I begin to read and I'm astounded to find out I'm reading a journal from 1919 by a man named Justin Pike who is absolutely no relation to me. Now, nobody outside of family had ever lived in that house. And we built that house. And we aren't related to Justin Pike. It is an absolute mystery as to how this diary gets under our stairwell on top of a hot water heater. A mystery I may never know the answer to. Maybe some things were just meant to be. But I think finding this diary probably had a whole lot to do with my love for history and my love for a good story. And uh, we're going to hope, hopefully bring that story to an end over the next weeks and months. So here's what I want you to do. If you're interested in helping me, Get out a pencil and a piece of paper. We're going to start going through this journal page by page. And I want you to start jotting down the clues. If you got any bit of a genealogy a genealogist in you, or you can do good internet research, maybe you're going to stumble across something that I haven't. And maybe, just maybe, we can find the family of Justin E. Pike. All right, let's open this diary and get started. All right, so let's open this up. And it is falling all apart, so I've done the best I can with it, though. Justin E. Pike with Love Mother. Now, this is the Excelsior Diary from 1919. Now, the first few pages are information. Just basic information, church calendar, eclipses, and then we have each month, and it looks like the moon phases, you guys can freeze frame if you're really interested in seeing any of that. Foretelling the weather, combinations of colors, foreign coins, and the metric system. Poisons and antidotes. 
some of this stuff is is funny now back then it was modern medicine but uh let's see what was i reading in there that had me laughing mm. maybe it's the next page helping yeah help in case of accidents this is great uh where's the snake bite one Mad dog or snake bite. Tie cord tight above wound, suck the wound, and cauterize with caustic or white hot iron at once. They were hardcore back then. Weights and measures to tell the time of the tide. For a little book, it has a lot of information. Principal cities, and I was noticing, look at the population of Atlanta, 154,000. Boy, that's changed. Business laws. Weekly table of wages. Oh, this was good. So in 1919, do you know the highest wage they have listed? Now this is weekly earnings. $18 a week. So if you worked six hours that week, you could expect to earn $2. If you worked six days, notice six day work week, they didn't have this five day junk, you got your $18. And that was about the best they felt like printing. <laughs> Some of these poor guys were making a buck fifty a week. That's, uh, three cents for an hour of work puts it in perspective when you find a dime doesn't it that meant something rates of income on stocks rules for computing interest all right here we go things easily forgotten unfortunately i cannot make this out what he put on weight and height not that it matters a whole lot i can right there on the height he was very short which was not uncommon back then but you can see five foot four hat size six and seven eighths now here's our first clue got an address for him justin e pike 459 royden street camden new jersey mother l and I believe that's an H. It could be a W, but I think it's an H. L-H or L-W Pike. Same address, Camden, New Jersey. And uh, I Google Street View that thing, and it looks like it's an empty lot. So it would probably been one of them, and it's a narrow, long lot. So it may have been a um, one of those narrow, tall houses that they lived in. All right, first entry, here we go. Now, there's going to be a lot of this. He, he comments on the weather in uh, just about every single entry. First entry, January 1st, 1919. Rainy, off and on, all day. Not in office all afternoon. Thursday, rain, off and on, all day. Sun shone for a few minutes. Not much doing all day in office. Worked until 12.30 p.m. on sketches for, I think that's liaison and barrage fire for maneuvers. So there was still some military activity going on. This word right here, I'm having trouble making out. I think it's liaison, though. All right. I'll try to hold it up so you guys can get a good view. Cloudy and rainy all day. Not much doing in the office. Working on citations mostly. Sent package containing lace for neck and metals home to mother. Lace cost 15 francs. Possible clue there. Um, I said I did not know the extent of his military service. 
what medals is did he get? Okay, this is like I said, right after the end of the war, which ended in late 1918. So did he fight? I guess is the answer that I'm looking for. Um, or was he kind of you know rear echelon? Was he an on office worker the entirety of the war? I I'm not sure. I don't know if this uh, map making and sketches that he's doing is, is a new thing for him, if that's what he's done all along. He's very cost conscientious. You'll, you'll see that um, as we continue along. No rain all day, but cloudy. Sun, sun shone for a few minutes. New, I think that's G2. D Dougherty. Okay, Dougherty. That's for sure Dougherty. It's two initials and Dougherty. Came in. Made signs for office doors all day. That's a name, and that might help us to identify where he was serving, who he was serving with. I've not found anything on that name yet. I'll let you look at it. I'm pretty sure that's G2, though, the beginning there. But everything after G2 until you get to what looks like something A. Dougherty. I don't know about Sunday the 5th, cloudy all day, made signs for office doors, not much doing in the office. I hear that every boy from Camden received $2 from some committee. I did not. <laughs> that kind of tickled me. The sun is shining, but it is not for long. This morning... The pools of water had thin ice upon them. We are still in, all right, here's a location. Now, I'm going to butcher this because I'm not French, but I'm almost positive that is Bourbon-le-Bain. B-O-U-R-B-O-N-N-E dash L-E-S dash B-A-I-N-S. There is a city that I have found named that. Had exercise 9 to 9.30 a.m. Guys, I'm going to be limited on time on these videos so that we're only going to be able to do a handful of these pages. But now that we're into the diary, it'll go quicker in the next videos. But be taking notes if you're wanting to help me do some research. Clear but cloudy all day. Lots of maps of Langries came in. Not much doing in the office. In the office all day. Wish they would send us home. You're going to hear that reflected quite a bit. Clear but cloudy all day. Folding maps. Made sketches showing machine gun barrage. Went to see Foudy. In the evening, cloudy and rain off and on all day. Here's another name. Russ Sturgis came in from the hospital. Tried to locate him for a job in adjutant's office, but is all filled up. Folding maps. All right, guys. That's going to have to be it for this video. There's some names there, some locations. If you want to jump in on this with me, throw, throw me some comments, what you find. And um, you can, if you got anything you need to email, I'm going to throw my email address up here. You can email me too. Now, I don't usually ask you guys to share videos, but in particular on this series, I would like you to share these videos. You never know who might end up watching, and wouldn't that be a cool way to get this thing returned. All right, until next time. Thanks a lot.